Hallelujah. Um, what I'm going to share tonight or today, you see, I don't even know what time zone I'm in. But what I'm going to teach you tonight, it's uh, I actually was jealous a little bit when God spoke to me to teach you. Uh, I was in Paris, I think it was about 4 a.m. in the morning. The Lord woke me up and he gave me a specific message for you. But it's a lesson he taught me and I was surprised. Why is he telling me to teach you this? But I am grateful because everything that we learn, you see, as a man or a woman of God, your greatness is measured by how many souls you can impact. Amen. And if you can duplicate what God put in you, can we increase my mic a little bit? <clears throat> I did too much shouting yesterday. If you can duplicate what God put in you, in others then you have fulfilled the purpose of god amen. amen you see if you serve god without the thought of better men and women coming from you better than yourself then what god are you serving joshua was supposed to be better than moses yeah. moses started the journey but joshua finished you are going to finish amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what we will talk about will require you to pay tremendous attention. Tremendous attention. And uh, if you pay attention, your life will not be the same. And uh, it is profound spiritual secrets and secrets of the realm of the spirit. Profound. You have to understand if the word of God says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, then you should be curious to know what spiritual battles look like. You know, as believers, we have diluted spiritual battles to I bind, I rebuke. But there is more to it than that. It's a whole realm. It's a whole world. Dimensions, existence, beings of all manner and kinds evil spirits, mighty angels. It is a realm that you need to know. And here's another thing that you need to understand why it's good for you to know. Every one of you that is here who is listening to my voice, you are preparing yourself for the world of spirits. Don't you know that? Our destiny is there. It's in the spiritual world. No, what I'm telling you is true. We are all either, you know, we, we, I mean, I hope no one is going to hell here. In fact, let me boldly declare it. We are not going to hell. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Our, our mission is to serve God so that when we enter the realm of the spirit, we enter into God's bosom. We enter into our rest in him. But guess what? You are preparing yourself for the spiritual world from the day you are born. So if... This world is influenced by the spiritual world. Then it is to your advantage to know what happens when you do certain things here and how to respond to certain things when they happen on the other side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to raise your right hand to heaven and pray that God will give you the spirit of revelation and understanding. Lift your voice and pray. Father, Lift your voice and pray. Revelation and understanding. Lift your voice and pray. Understanding this morning. Lift your voice Spirit and pray. And revelation Spirit and understanding. Revelation and understanding. Lift your voice and pray. Returimanda vazipa ndukurema. Ilabando si pika sakuru. Ridiri kandore ma salabando repa asi amando je. Ridi ida roka ramba dele mando repa. Ridiri mando si pandele kasi. Leko basan kuri divi. Uras tandara kandere mando. Leko rima ne basanda. Open me up, God, to revelation, God. Open me up to that understanding, God. Lift your voices, lift your voices. Lift your voices. Lift 
Amen. Amen. Lift your right hand again. Let me pray for you. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I receive the wisdom. I receive the wisdom that comes from heaven. That comes from heaven. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. Let it rest on me. Let it rest on me. Let me have celestial understanding. Let me have celestial understanding. May I know the ways of the Spirit. May I know the ways of the Spirit that I may may navigate this world that I may navigate this world according to your will O oh God according to your will O oh God in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name somebody shout amen amen hallelujah hallelujah I want you to grab your Bibles quick and you are going to go to 1st Samuel chapter 3 and verse 19 1st Samuel chapter 3 and verse number 19. Amen. Are you there? Yes. Amen. Now, instead of Samuel, you're going to put your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. yes. You're going to put whose name? My, My name. name. Your name, not... <laughs> whose name? My uh -huh. name. Uh -huh. Whose name again? My, My name. name. I don't know what is happening to this left side. Get it together. I feel like... You need deliverance. Maybe you should tell everyone to stretch their hands to pray for you. Because I can feel the overflow, but I don't know why. Are you sure you're alive? Uh, okay, okay. Even the overflow, look at how vibrant they are. Show me the overflow again. Hallelujah. Aha. Uh -huh. Look, look at that. Look at how vibrant they are. Let's see the other overflow over here. Can we see the one out here too? <laughs> Listen to their shout. They are on fire. Hallelujah. Show me the other over there. We look at them. They are ready. Hallelujah. And we see the right side right here. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Will. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Are you ready, left side? Uh, okay. YouTube, YouTube, are you ready? <laughs> I, I almost sinned again. I welcome all those who are online. <laughs> On YouTube, may the Lord bless you. I recognize your presence. We recognize your presence. And we are together in spirit. Amen. Can we all read it together? One, two, three. And, and, time grew, grew, and the Lord was with him. And did let none of his words fall to the ground. Let's read it again with your name instead of Samuel. One, two, three. And Will grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. One more time. One, two, three. And Will grew, and the Lord was with Will, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. Hallelujah. You may sit in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Now, I am going to teach you something that is extremely profound and uh, it will shake you up a little bit, but at the end of it, you will overcome. Amen. Because the point of you learning these things is to overcome. God speaks so that we can be overcomers. God equips us so that we can overcome. With every battle we face, if God be for us, then who can be what? Against us. And the difference between where we are and our acceleration and our breakthrough is simply a word from God. So if God be for us, we can never lose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So hear me and hear me well by the Spirit of God. What we're going to learn is going to be very strange. But it's the truth nevertheless. And if you can accept this truth, if you will allow it to come into you, you will solve 99.99% of your issues. Amen. Amen. I thought I would hear better. Amen. Now, you have to understand that God never created anything empty. Voids don't exist because God never created anything to be void but there are pockets of voids that are created because 
the children of God are not aware of spiritual things. You see, when the Lord created the heavens and the earth, verse 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, if you read it in Hebrew, it doesn't say in the beginning. Because if you say in the beginning, it assumes God is in time. It says, God prepares the heavens and the earth, then the beginning. Because God is not in time. So, but in order for it to make sense in our language, because our language isn't as rich, we have to say in the beginning, but you need to have the understanding of who we are talking about, then it will put God out of time. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But then when you read the next passage, it says, and the earth was void and formless. Now, if God created the heavens and the earth, you know God never created anything to be void or formless. This is what many theologians call the gap period because between Genesis verse 1 and verse 2 is where the fall of Satan happens. That is where now you find the earth being without form, covered in water. It's chaotic. Are, are you listening to me? Now, God is not the author of chaos. What does it mean? God is not the producer or the creator of chaos. But it doesn't mean that God cannot use chaos for his good. Are you listening to me? So now, all of a sudden, you go to verse 2, you realize that the earth is in chaos. Tremendous chaos. That the Spirit of God is rearranging and restoring the earth. How do we know that God is restoring the earth? The Bible says it like this. It says, God says this to Adam. He says, be fruitful and multiply and replenish. If I tell you refill your soda, it means there used to be Coca-Cola in there or Sprite. I cannot tell you to replenish what wasn't there. Are you listening to me? That is why you see God causing great animals to come from the water. And all this, he's not saying how he formed them. And the Bible just says, and God said, let birds come from the water. Because they already existed. But the chaos caused death to enter into a planet where death was never supposed to be. Are you getting what I'm saying? So God began to restore what was already there. Creating certain things, but if you know what scripture is really talking about, you will understand that you find water is already there, but you don't see the creation of water. Are you getting what I'm saying? The ground was always there. God just separates the ground from the waters. So now there is something chaotic that is happening and you see God restoring everything simply by his word. Now, if we read Samuel again, he says, And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. What does this mean? It means that Samuel's words were not void. They were not empty. To fall to the ground means to be useless, to be pointless. Because words are not supposed to go into the ground. Only seeds go into the ground. Woo! But if words fall to the ground, then the words become useless. It means they are of no effect. Now when you read Genesis chapter 1, you see immediately that God, the creator, the uncreated creator, the father of all spirits, the father of lights, who dwells in thick darkness, in unapproachable light. If you're not spiritual, you think you will not understand what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is true. The God who is enthroned between the cherubims. You see him speaking. And by his word, everything is being restored. So it means it is an abomination. If you speak and your words don't come to pass. Let me find somebody I can talk to. Oh, that's so good. Let me find somebody I can talk to. God did not give you a mouth. So that you create voids. Come on. I th let, let, me let me go to the overflow somewhere. Yeah. Let me talk to the ones online. God did not give you a mouth. He did not give you words. So that you see, every time you speak, 
you are creating space for something. Wow. Every time you open your mouth to utter something, you are creating room for something. But if your words fall to the ground, you just created room for demons to play. Wow. Let me explain to you something. Evil spirits, and this is why I laugh at spiritual babies, because they try to speak about things they don't know. Some of us, we didn't call ourselves prophets. Jehovah called us. We know what we are called to do. You cannot be called by God to do something that you don't know. He will teach you regarding your assignment. So when people who have titles of prophet or whatever they want to be, and they talk about things that they don't know, it's actually fun, it's laughable to me. Because what they're doing is they're creating more damage to the kingdom of God. Because mis misinformation means a waste of time. Because you go around the same place, suffer. And then by the time you come to discover it's your children's children that will benefit, not you. But the Bible says you shall see the goodness of God, you, yeah. in the land of the living. Yeah. Before my children can enjoy it, I will enjoy it first. Amen. And they will enjoy it more, but it will be... Let me talk to somebody that, that is real and honest. I did not fast and pray so that somebody else enjoys it before me. No. I need to tell them how good it was. So that they know what they are receiving. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So sit, sit for two seconds. Anyone who understands the world of spirits, you understand this truth. There are classes of spirits. There are classes of angels. Evil spirits unclean spirits devils and demons they are all different they are not the same anyone who says they are the same you know they are a spiritual baby they are not the same fallen angels and the spirits that roam the earth are not the same the ones that possess you to continue smoking or to continue doing this this little stuff these are the spirits of the giants running around these are not fallen angels, but they are controlled by fallen angels. The most dangerous spirits, all spirits are bad. But the most dangerous spirits are fallen ones. Now, fallen ones have no permission to interact with the material world without the permission of a human being causing them to come in. Wow, you're this is why you find the Bible, the Bible is warning you in Deuteronomy, the practice of divination. That's why when they say that, oh, uh, Prophet Love is a divine, I laugh at them because you know they don't even know what divination is. They don't even know what it is. It's so sad. If we have evil spirits, deliver me. If you can't, you're just talking about it, then you have no power. Sit down. If I know somebody is misleading souls, I will fast and pray and will deliver you. Who say in the mighty you'll be preaching a hey, down. You get free. That's what Paul did. He saw a woman with a spirit of divination and he said, Come out of her. And the woman was delivered. So why are these men of God just calling? me or maybe other prophets or oh, spirit of divination why aren't you delivering him Amen. Uh, am i talking to myself it's because they don't know what they're talking about hear me hear me well this is why you find that the bible forbids conjuring spirits it forbids it practice of divination because these spirits cannot come or cross over from the spiritual world into the material world there is a barrier unless a man opens a bridge you see when the lord jesus came 
This is God taking the form of a man. When he came on earth, what did he do? He opened the way for the Holy Spirit to freely come to us. So good. I'm talking to, so I'm to I, I don't know if I'm talking to you. Are you understanding what I'm trying to tell you? Yeah. Before that, God could only walk with those he chose from birth. But when Jesus our Lord came on this side, because he was God, when he opened up the spiritual portals, what did he do? He said, I will send him to you. So now, a man that was on this side that is God, but is a man, that showed us how to walk with God, he also went to the other side and sent him to us. Amen. 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 So now we can walk with the Holy Spirit without separation. Because somebody opened the way. Amen. That when we call on the name of the Lord Jesus, to be baptized by the Holy Spirit is second nature. Is this making sense now? Yes. Is this making sense? Yes. So now every time you speak, depending on the words you use, you may be provoking spaces either in this side of reality or that side of reality. Are you listening to what I'm saying? This is why the Bible says it like this, that God will judge you. Will judge you for every unfruitful conversation, empty words. Because many of you don't know what you're doing on the other side. Teaching. Good. Too good. For every vain word a man shall speak. You shall bear account of it. Why am I bearing account for vain words? It means that there is something I am doing. Please. You, you should do like uh, the Baptist. <laughs> are, are you hearing me? For every word the Bible says you bear account. Why am I bearing account? It means that the, you are either adding or subtracting and you will need to answer for it. Why did you do this? Why did you do Wait, Lord, I thought I was just talking. Listen to what the Lord Jesus said. The Lord Jesus said it this way. Let your answers be simple, yes or no. Anything in between is of the devil, wait. Amen. So imagine how many things of the devil you have created. Wow. Let me talk to people who want to hear the truth. I want to talk to some people who want to hear the truth. This clapping is discouraging. Maybe I should talk to the people. So hear me, hear me well. For every vain word, you shall bear account. So there is something that is happening that God is concerned about that he has to question you on. He has to question you on. So many of you have been praying, declaring nothing is happening. Your words may be falling to the ground. Now, what the Lord told me to teach you, I am setting groundwork for you to understand where we are going. Yes. Not only are there voids in the spirit that makes or creates a playground for evil spirits. But hear this and hear this well. Let me tell you the words that the Lord Jesus told me to tell you. He said, your words are soldiers. Uh. Your words are soldiers. Every time you speak, the words have a life of their own. Based on the enforcement, depending on what you're trying to do, your words can be captured. Mm. Let's go to the Bible. Daniel chapter 10 verse 11. Daniel 10 11. And this is Gabriel speaking. 
And he said unto, unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright. For unto thee I am now sent, and when he spake, when he had spoken these words unto me, I stood trembling. Hmm. Then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I came for thy words. Notice. When God hears your words, there is a reaction in the spirit that angels react to Come what on. you said. Come on. Come on. Not because God said so, but angels come to your words. You didn't hear what I said. At thy word, when your words were heard, I came unto thy word. I came to them. Uh, sit for two seconds. We are going somewhere. He said, from the day you chose to, to, to fast and to pray and to seek God, you, you were heard in heaven. And I came for thy words. But where did he come? Where did he find the words? Verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me. Wait. Mm -hmm. Some of you, your words are hard. But the angels follow the word. Mm -hmm. So if your words are trapped, wow. when the angel hears the prayer in heaven and God sends them, they will go to where your prayer has been arrested. Come on. Yeah. Yet the answer should be returning to you. Come on. <laughs> Sit for two seconds. Let me explain it. I'm showing you spiritual mathematics. You say, Father, this, 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 heaven hears you. God says, Michael, go. But when Michael is responding, the word is trapped somewhere. But the angel doesn't know your location. He knows where the word is. Let me explain to you. Let me give you two examples. Ishmael is a young baby. Hagar runs away with him because Sarah is uh, annoying her. <laughs> Gets to the wilderness, there is no water. There is no water. The boy is dying. She prays, nothing is happening. Heaven cannot hear her because her words are falling to the ground. So she set Ishmael on the side for Ishmael to die, but she didn't want to watch his, her son die. So she laid the baby this way and looked away. The Bible says that Ishmael cried to God from his heart. Now we don't know what kind of prayer the young boy made. But immediately you hear something. That the angel of the Lord now is answering Haggai. Saying, Haggai. What are you doing here? For I heard the voice of the boy calling. What are you guys doing here? Meaning that angels locate you by your prayer. Let me, I want to talk to somebody that. Let me, let, me, let me show you what the Bible says. The Bible says it this way. Let's read it. Let's read it, please. Jeremiah. Hmm. God gave me a bunch of scriptures. I don't even know which one it is. <laughs> Isaiah 55, verse 9. Isaiah 55 from verse 9. 
Listen to this. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So God is telling you how you think about things is not how I think about it. Meaning however you think prayer should work, it doesn't work like that unless it works the way he thinks. Did you hear what I just said? So just because I think things work a certain way, does it really work the way God thinks? Because if it is my way of thinking, then it is far from God. But once I understand how he thinks, then I understand prayer. So God is already setting boundaries. Hey, listen. How you think is not how I think. And you have to remember, God's thoughts are not an opinion. If he says the sky is green, it's green. Amen. There's no debating it. Verse 10. Mm. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not hither, but watereth the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Notice what God is saying. He's saying, as rain falls, as Kali, we have been receiving a lot of rain. Everywhere looks green. I said, Lord, if there is a fire this summer, California, I'm moving. <laughs> With all this rain, nah, there better not be any fire. Ah, it's extra green. He said, as, as, as the water falls or the rain falls and waters the ground and everything blooms. Verse 11. This is now interesting. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. But you didn't hear the whole thing. It shall not return. Wait. He said rain doesn't return. But he says my word will return. So when I speak a word... That word needs to return. When it returns, then I know what I prayed is accomplished. Amen. 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 Come on. I'm, I don't know if somebody is hearing me. You're teaching good. I don't know if you're... I think apostle, come and preach. I don't know if they are too shocked or what is happening. The Lord is giving an example with rain, which is earthly. But when it comes to his words, he separates it. He said, as the rain falls and gives things to grow. He said, so in the same way, my word also works. But the difference is my word comes back. Listen to this. So shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. So when I speak a word, it goes to a place. It does what it is desired to do. When it comes back and says, mission accomplished. Now I know a testimony is about to come. Amen. Come on. Come on. Now how do I know the word went and came back? <laughs> Are you still here? Yes. If you're here, shout fire. Fire! Sit for two seconds, I beg you. For two seconds, we are going somewhere. How do I know the word returned? Remember, the Lord told me the words are soldiers. Let's read this. He says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. Meaning that it goes, captures something and brings it. But it shall accomplish that which I please. Notice the word is carrying the ability to please God. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. So the word can prosper. It means it picks up life of its own. That is what the Bible tells you. Life and death is in the power of what? The tongue. Those who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So if words are soldiers, when they are sent on a mission, they are supposed to return with something. 
Now remember, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Don't forget this. So how do I know what I prayed for has already been answered? How do I know that what I declared has brought back something? You see, there are two dimensions of prayer that believers are not aware of. When I pray unto God concerning something and I finish, I am supposed to speak as an oracle of God. Because I speak to God to empower me. Let me show it to you. Go to the book of Jeremiah. It's about to be sweet. <laughs> I hope you're writing scriptures because God gave me all this and this is for you. That's why I was jealous. Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my word in thy mouth. <laughs> Your lips will be touched today. Amen. I said your lips will... The louder the amen. amen. Say, Jeremiah, I will touch your lips and put my words in there. Now watch this. Uh. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build up and to plant. Notice he did not say that uh, I will tell you which nation to pull down. He said, I have touched your lips and put my word. From now on, you are above the nations. What you say goes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are worried about a car note, about an apartment. God gave you power over nations. Let me talk to people who are really ready to wake up to this reality. <laughs> are you still here? Yes. Now watch this. Watch this. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Verse 12. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well... Ah, sorry, the verse before. Hey. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a road of almond tree. Of an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, thou hast seen well. For I will hasten my word to perform it. Wait. Notice the word can be rushed. Mm. Boy. Boy, good. I, I don't think you caught it. God has touched his lips and gave him power. Then God shows him a vision and says, what do you see? He says, uh, I see a rod. You have to remember what a rod means. A rod means authority. And, and the almond tree, I forget what it says in Hebrew, but the almond tree means... Uh, 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 um, what is the word? Uh, it means to be active and quick to act. It's the spiritual meaning of an almond tree. To be quick to act or ready to act or willing to act. Amen. This is why the Lord said, you have seen well because I will hasten my word. So if God has put his word in you, you have the ability to rush them. Come oh on. So good. Amen. No one can rush God, but the words of God can be rushed. Yes. This is why you find that the man who had his servant sick, he told them, uh, his synagogue leaders went to Jesus, they said, there's a man who has been good to us, he's a Roman, but his servant is really sick, who has been very helpful to him. Please come and heal him. Jesus said, I will go. When they heard, the guy heard Jesus is coming, he said, Lord, you don't need to come to my house. Why do you need to come? Just send your word. Jesus was shocked because, Jesus was shocked because he was like, how does this guy have this revelation? Mm. 
How does he have this revelation? Notice what the Bible says. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their troubles. So every time God speaks, words become soldiers. They become now like an echo location where angels go. Beep, beep, beep. They know the GPS of where to go. Are, are you capturing this? Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. I will rush it. I will, you have seen, I will rush it. So you have spirit of delay, not because there is a demon. You don't know how to rush the soldiers. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I, I think I'm preaching to them. Either you are offended or you're... If you're offended, I'm glad you are because you're learning something. Hey. Especially this side, I don't know what's happening. Only the Prince of Zamunda is celebrating. Sit for two seconds, sit for two seconds, sit for two seconds. I want to do this boom, bang, bang, bada boom, bang, bang. So that we can pray. And I can, I can spend time with my, with my boys because I've missed them. I haven't been home. Now hear me, hear me well, hear me well. Hear me well, hear me well. Hear me well. Capture. <laughs> Listen. How do I know the word has returned? Because the victory is not in saying the word. Because the words can be captured. Are you listening to me? Psalms 103, go to verse 27. Psalms 103, go to verse 27, I believe. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you something. Psalms 103, I believe verse 27, if there is a 27. 17 maybe. There's no 27, right? It's 17. Verse 18. 19. 20. Yes, right there. It's 20. Right there. Now, 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 listen, listen to this. Pay attention to this. How do I know? Now, you have to understand that angels move with the speed of light. They are very fast. Because... There are shortcuts in the spiritual world because they use gateways and portals. That's why angels can just appear and disappear. They can be a stay away from heaven into earth. People think it is a physical ladder. No, it's not. I have seen it. It doesn't look like that. It's actually called the Sulam. I taught a deep message years ago called the Sulam anointing. I taught, I saw it with my own eyes when I was in my father's church in Maryland was the first time I saw this vision. And when I saw it, actually the people in the church were passed out under the power of God. And I was caught up by this vision. And when I came back to myself, I noticed everyone was vibrating under the power of God. It was a tremendous sight to see. Now hear me well, hear me well. How do I know the word has returned? Because God is saying, my word shall not return unto me void. If I send somebody, how do I know how do I know that my message arrived? Unless the messenger comes back to me, then I don't know that my message was delivered. This is why when you send a text message, it tells you when it is delivered and when it is read. To confirm to you that you did not actually not send. But there is a confirmation that is sent back. When you send an email and it's the wrong address, your own email will tell you this wasn't sent. It did not find the address. So it's dormant. It didn't go anywhere. But when it goes through, there is a way to receive a receipt that tells you, yes, what you sent has been delivered. This is not different spiritually. In the days of kingdoms, in those days where they will send a messenger, the messenger, if he didn't come back at a certain time, they captured him, then now this is war. But when the messenger came back, then we know that, okay, uh, there is a message that has been brought. Are, are you listening? So in the same way, when you send words, 
they are supposed to return for you to have the confirmation that what you are asking for, what you spoke to, came to pass. You need to know. How will you know unless it has returned? How do I know that I can recreate the same successes? Because when I did it, it came back and I can do it again. This is why Peter said, uh, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have, I give you. Rise up and walk. And next day, Peter could heal people over and over again the same way because his words returned. Wow, so Amen. good. So he knew he could do it again. He could do it again. He could. Is this making sense so far? Yes. Now, in order for you to understand this, you have to be discerning. Not in your feelings, discerning. Not in your emotions, discerning. You need to discern your spirit for you to know that what I declared came back. That's right. That's right. Yes. You need to be discerning. Because if you're not discerning, you can miss it. There are times when you pray. Let me give you my testimony first. When the Lord taught me this lesson, he taught me this in 2011. There was a lady that could not have babies. I didn't know this at all. She had fibroids. She had been married for, I think, 9 or 11 years. And she could not have any children. And uh, I didn't know this. I had no idea. But the Lord showed me a vision of her having a young boy. And the Lord told me, tell her, I am giving her a boy. I said, Lord, why do I need to tell her if you're giving her? He said, tell her now. I got afraid. I said, woman, go buy baby boy clothes. <laughs> you're going to have a boy. I touched her power. She fell down under the power, got up. I said, leave service, go. I kicked her out. <laughs> Not serious. And she went. Three months later, she sent pregnant boy. Until the boy was born, they brought him to me. Maybe now he's like maybe nine or ten years old. I can't really remember. He's a, he's a big boy now. But I asked the Lord a question. I said, why did you push me like that? Why did, why did I need to say it? The Lord told me, because if you did not say it, she cannot get pregnant. So I was shocked because I didn't understand it. Then I started understanding the formula of God. Why didn't Jesus just make Lazarus just get up? But he had to go and stand before the tomb. And say, Lazarus, why is God using words every time? Because words are not only the carriers of the power of God. But words are also soldiers that carry out the will of God. Amen. So unless you speak, there is no arrow that... Oh, so good. If you speak, it is like you are now, your aim is at the right spot. So good, so good. Ah, then from that I said, listen, you want a child, just come. I'll pregnify you with words. Amen. Amen. I mean, you've seen it happen multiple times. Yeah. But, but hear me now. How, how do I know that the word has returned? Here's the key now. When you pray, you have to be extremely discerning of your spirit. Extremely. Not a little bit extremely. Meaning that I need to be investigating my spirit when I'm praying. Now, this is very important. I need to be checking my spirit when I am praying. Have you ever noticed there are times you'll be doing spiritual warfare? Father, I break this, I bind this. All of a sudden, something happens to you. You get extremely angry. Ah. But you don't know why you're upset. And your warfare that was cute becomes very aggressive. All of a sudden. And 
and then you stop you're like what what just happened you sent words they came back and when they came back they told you we need more reinforcement then your spirit rose up repakata wow there was now extra power delivered and when you are done you felt extremely happy and you don't know why that is called a node of victory inside of you there was celebration yet physically you have nothing to celebrate but inside there is joy that what i have prayed for what i have declared what i have called god on are you listening to me let me show you something sit down for two seconds look at this go to first kings we'll come back to psalms 103 verse 20. first kings chapter 17 and verse 1. now listen to this this is very interesting elijah the tishbite who was of the inhabitants of gilad said unto ahab as the lord god of israel liveth before whom i stand there shall be not be due no rain these years but according to my word listen the guy didn't say god said so he said listen guy listen there will not be rain until i say how was elijah confident that this will happen how was he confident that this would happen how was he confident that this would happen? <laughs> James chapter 5 verse 17. James chapter 5 verse 17. <laughs> Elias of Simi Valley was a man subject. <laughs> Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it may not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Wait. But when you read Kings, you didn't see the part. Before he went to stand and say there shall be no rain. The guy was in his room. Shakatapa. Rain you will not fall. He prayed earnestly. When the words came back, he said, now it's done. Then he went before Ahab. He said, Ahab, come here. There will be no rain until I... Lift up your voice and shout fire. Fire! Sit down for two seconds. Here is your issue now. Here is your issue. You declare without enforcement. You do pa, 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 pa. But zero power because you are never, you are never empowered. Let me give you an example. Do you know why I don't like doing international prophecy? I tell you this. I know what is coming. I really know. The reason why I don't do international prophecy, I keep quiet about it, is because... I haven't felt the need to do it because there are so many people doing it and this and me I don't want to flex prophecy it's not about showing that I know what is coming that's foolish if God pushes me I will do it if God doesn't push me I won't do it remember the top of the year I told you about rain I told you that the rain is a sign it has been raining I wish I didn't say it because I'm not a big fan of rain Are you listening? I don't do it because then what? All chaos is coming. Remember when I prophesied Canada? Canada has the most strict gun rules. And I said, I saw a shooting that will happen in Canada will shock people. This is last year. And there was a shooting and people were shocked. 
How is this possible? But you see, then what? Then I realize, ah, why am I even talking? Let me, there's no need for it. I'd rather minister to you. Yeah. Unless the Lord pushes me, I don't need to. Because seeing what God has said, listen, calamity is coming anyway. It's not a surprise. Being specific about it is not a big deal. <coughs> it's good if God is saying it, but it's not a big deal because we know Jesus is coming. So the world is getting darker. That's obvious. But you are supposed to be the light of the world. You're supposed to be the light of this world. So my duty is to make sure your oil doesn't run dry. Amen. So that you keep Amen. burning and burning and burning and burning. Amen. So hear me by the spirit of God. Hear me by the spirit of God. I have six minutes. Honest prayer. Not too much prayer. Honest prayer. Honest prayer. You declare... Without prayer, mistake. Wow. You see, by the time I come to tell you this and this will happen in your life, trust me, I know what I'm saying is happening. Amen. If it doesn't happen, then God is not on the throne. I know what I'm saying. Amen. If I stand and I tell you, listen, my guy, you are dying. Ah, you have to make sure and understand this. I've done my homework. Mm. If I tell you, you will live, there is no way you're dying. If I tell you you will succeed, there is no way you're losing. Amen. And if I tell you this one is not good, go this way. You don't leave. Trust me, I spent my time honestly. By the time I am speaking, you see many times when I come and I prophesy in church, there are times I do prophesy on the spot. It's not a big deal for me. But before I leave home, sometimes I already know who I'm going to prophesy to. A hundred percent. I can be at home like this in, in prayer. And I will walk in the church and the Lord will tell me this one is coming from this place. They need this, this one. You pray for them, this. By the time I come to church, I'm just looking for people I already know. Yeah. Mm. A hundred percent. I remember when we were in Ghana, I was with the... With my son, Eva. You, did you come to Ghana in the Ghana trip? Yeah, even Bishop JT was there. I was so tired, jet lagged. I didn't know they wanted me to preach, but in them, I didn't even pray for this one. The angel of the Lord came, took me to somebody's house, showed me everything, and then brought me back. I said, okay, I will write it down when I will. <laughs> I passed out. When I go to service, I prophesied to people. Then I remembered what I was shown. Why? Because you are caught up with time space. God doesn't work like that. When you're in the place of earnest prayer, you don't overwork because you have already done the thing. You see, many of you try to pray earnestly when calamity has already come. So you are being defensive instead of being offensive. The best defense is always what? Offense. A good offense is the best defense. Meaning you have to be prepared for every aspect of life that is coming. So when you stand up and you declare the word of God, that says the Lord, I shall live, I shall prosper. Are you saying that out of emotion? Are you saying that out of sentiment? Or did you honestly pray and something bubbled in your spirit? concerning what you're praying for and God makes you to speak a word what has provoked you to speak the Bible says let him that speak speak as an oracle meaning if I stand to talk I have to be empowered by prayer I have to be empowered by consecration so that by the time I stand and talk the level of enforcement I have in the spirit. Imagine Daniel, a great man of God, a powerful man of God, as great and powerful as he was. For 21 days, his prayer was blocked. That Gabriel came, but he went to the long, wrong location. Uh -huh. 
The princes of Persia were holding him. Why were they holding him? They were holding Daniel's prayer. And he can only go where Daniel's prayer is. So when the word is returning to Daniel, it never returned. It was captured. So Gabriel went to that location because Gabriel has come to fulfill that word. Psalms 103, quickly, verse 20. Look at this. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Wait, oh. Doing what commandments? The word commandments, there is command. Hearkening unto the voice of his word. John the Baptist, what did John the Baptist say? I am what? The voice, voice. that cries in the wilderness. I am what? The voice. Hearkening unto the voice of his word. So who is the voice? You. <laughs> did it go over your head? John the Baptist says, I am the voice crying in the wilderness. So you are thinking John was just shouting in the wilderness. No, John was telling you this. I have honestly prayed. What I'm doing is declaration. There are angels that have gone out. That is why every time he came to the Jordan, thousands of people were lining up repenting. Yes. Let me talk to somebody that wants to hear this. Thousands of people were lining up at the Jordan. They did not know his address. But when he showed up at the Jordan, people were coming, please, I repent. I want to be cleansed. But they never heard him preaching. How was he bringing them? In the wilderness, angels were being dispatched. Uh, some of you, let me, let me talk this. Let me find some. I'm trying to unlock you to understand something. Yes. Sit for two seconds. Do you know why many of you are traveling from... Okay, how many people have traveled from overseas? Or out of state? I know there are some Canadians. Look at how many Man, people that have yeah. traveled. If you go to the overflow, you'll see them. You look in here, you'll see them. Amen. What do you think brought you here? <laughs> there is something that pushed you and said, I have to hey. go to see me. I have to go to see me. I have to go there. Yeah. I have to be in the house. Yeah. I have to watch. <laughs> sit down for two seconds. Sit down for two seconds. So much so <laughs> that some people think I've done some witchcraft. <laughs> oh, they will say, oh, his teachings are so addictive. <laughs> <laughs> no, which is true. Because it's not me, it's Jesus. You see, when the voice, the, the, your word, the word of God is like, is like honey. It is sweet. It is bread indeed. So many don't understand why people are attracted to my teaching a lot. It is not because of any, I teach you the, what is in scripture. If you agree, you agree, you don't, that's your problem. I know what I'm teaching. But the spirits of people are being drawn closer to Christ because of what they are hearing. Yeah. Not closer to me, closer to Christ. Yeah. Closer to the Lord. Yeah. So they are confused. <laughs> <laughs> people just have itchy ears. If you are teaching the truth, why isn't God bringing them to you? Is God blind? Is God deaf? Does he not know he wants his people saved? Why is he sending them somewhere else? Are you better than God? It's foolishness. I, I, I saw one person saying, oh, you know, I used to sleep watching his teachings. And then all of a sudden, I had nightmares. <laughs> it was a comment I don't remember who sent me. Somebody was like, oh, prof." Prophet Lovi, can you tell me, uh, can you explain this to me? It was like trying to expose videos, which I love now. I realize they're just spreading the gospel. Yeah. They're just pointing people to us. Yeah. 
Amen. Uh, Prophet Lovi, can, can you this and this and this? And the person wrote, I had nightmares after I watched your videos and I watched them. I just couldn't sleep. And the person said, yeah, when I made this video for nights, I saw him coming to choke me. I said, <laughs> I said, look how Satan has played these foolish people. If God indeed sent you to do an expose, am I omnipresent to know what video you made? <laughs> what kind of witchcraft is this? That it's on autopilot. <laughs> I can hear you people all the way on that side. <laughs> it's on autopilot. I, I, even me, and I, for three days I was just in spiritual warfare. If God sent you to do something, the Bible says you shall trample over scorpions and serpents and by no means will they harm you. Why are you being harmed? Mm. <laughs> you know, people who have known me from day one laugh about, they're even shocked. Hey, what kind, where, where is the juju? <laughs> I promise you, if it was a real juju, they would come and get it from me. <laughs> if it was. <laughs> the key here is this, children of God. The devil is a big time deceiver. He would take advantage of your ignorance because you just created a void. When you create a void, you gave him a playground. So in finishing, ask yourself this genuine question. Have I just been, you know people just say speak the word, speak the word. No, that's not how you're supposed to speak the word. It's not a toy. The word of God is like a double-edged sword. This is not for children. Amen. God will not just put a sword in your hands. You might kill people. You know, I don't know where people got this idea that, oh, because it's from God, it can't harm people. That, who told you that? Elijah killed kids. <laughs> bald head, bald head. <laughs> A bear came out of nowhere, took children. God didn't if God... <laughs> Pretended he didn't see. The kids appear in heaven. God is like, ah, who told you to insult him? Who sent you? And this was a prophet. You see, today's Christianity is too soft. Because it's not spiritual. Oh, the Holy Spirit will not do that. You haven't read the book of Acts. Peter is speaking to Ananias and Sapphira. My guy, you sold your land. Nobody asked you to give. Why did you need to cheat? You thought you were lying to me. No, you are lying to the Holy Spirit. Because you have done this, there are boys at the door, ready to go and bury you. Boom. The guy dies. Instantly. His wife comes also lies. He says, oh, the ones that buried your husband are also approaching to go and bury you. We have soft Christianity. Soft. Many need spiritual gym. Zero endurance in the spirit. They'll pray for two days. They'll say, I have prayed all prayers. I have done everything. Done everything. So God is powerless. We are too soft. Where is the power of God? That if you came incorrect, it can cost you. Ah, the God of Israel is God. You don't just, it's not. We've met, you know, Jesus. Ah, there are big consequences in coming the wrong way. I don't know where we you know i'm shocked where these doctrines came off from you see the bible says in the last day many shall depart from the faith 
giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. Notice, to depart from the faith, he did not say depart from the religion. Meaning they will depart from what faith is. And they will start taking in other teachings that will dilute faith. So now, the Bible says, do not suffer a witch to live. Then they will say, no, just pray for their repentance. Huh? Come to Africa. Come to... <laughs> Let that witch die. They won't just say, die. You die. 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 <laughs> Every altar. Everywhere. Die. They don't play games. Western Christianity is soft. Oh, you have to ah, extra soft. <laughs> I don't know who came one time and he told me, oh, you know this and this happened. I said, listen, I know this person did you wrong. Do you want me to pray just as a prophet or a father? Or a pastor? Because depending on what you want, if I'm a father, this guy won't survive. If I'm a prophet, he will suffer. <laughs> if I'm a pastor, I'll just... Or Domini Patri. It will be cute prayers. Anyone that touched Israel felt the consequence. There should be a consequence for touching you Come as on. a child of the Most High God. Amen. There should be a consequence for touching your children. Amen. There should be a consequence for touching your business. Amen. There should be a consequence. Hey. Hey. There, there should be a consequence for somebody trying witchcraft on you. Amen. There should be a consequence for somebody whatever a person tries that is negative yes. they need to understand that what you touch you don't touch yes. and let, and serve them as an example to the kingdom of darkness yes. that's how it ought to be yes. hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray now stand up we're going to pray stand up Your prayer will be simple, but yet effective Amen. and honest. Yes. You know yourself. There are things that you want, you've been declaring, you're still waiting on God. Nah. You should be, un you should be understanding that now the words can be hastened. Yes. But also you can be empowered that your words will work yes. and return to you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor, say, all things are possible. All things are possible. I can't hear you. All things are possible. I can't hear you. All things are possible. I can't hear you. All things are possible. Now, I want you to earnestly pray, speaking to God. And you're going to tell the Lord Jesus, Father, today, I earnestly pray, empower me. That what I've been praying for, and you point out those things that you have been praying for, this one and this one and this one. Now I understand that my prayer did not have enforcement. That's why it was weak. I was praying from a place of not understanding. That your angels hearken to what I am saying. To carry out your will. Oh Lord, I pray now in the name of Jesus. Empower my prayer. Like Elijah who was just a man like you, like a, a man like me. Elijah was a man like me. Honestly prayed and he could stop the rain with one declaration. Father, today, honestly, I cry to you. Truthfully, I cry to you. Let my declarations never fall to the ground. Lift your voice and pray. Father, may my word today, O God. Thank you for showing me that the way I was 
As you touch Jeremiah's lips, as you touch Jeremiah's lips, touch my lips. Touch my lips. May I receive the keys to the kingdom. May I receive the keys to the kingdom. May I receive keys to the kingdom. May I receive keys to the kingdom. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. May I receive keys to the kingdom. As you touch my Jeremiah's lips, like you touch Jeremiah's lips today. Touch my lips. Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, whatsoever I would declare, whatsoever I would declare, let it come to pass. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Hey, yes, God. Yes, God. In Jesus mighty name. In Jesus mighty name. Lift your lift your hands to him. Begin to ask him for grace to tarry in prayer. Because without your ability to tarry in prayer, it is difficult for you to receive anything from him. 
Are you listening to me? Yes. yes. Lift up your voice. Ask for the grace to tarry in prayer. Father, give me the grace to tarry in prayer. Lord, give me the grace to tarry in prayer. In prayer. Give me the grace to press and tarry in prayer. Give me the grace to tarry in prayer. Lift up your voice. Ask for the grace. Give me the grace. against death in your house I want you to declare that there will be life and no one will die prematurely in your house lift your voice and begin to pray Father, I speak. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Speak light over my house. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Father, I cancel it. Bring the house. Death, come out of my house. I speak light over my house. No one is going to die in my house. Death, come out of my house. I speak light over my house. No one is going to die in my house. Death, come out of my house. I speak light over my house. No one is going to die in my house. Death, come out of my house. I speak light over my house. No one is going to die in my house. Death, come out of my house. I declare life. I declare life in my house. I declare life in my house. 
Listen to me. After today, you will know the God that has anointed you. Hallelujah. Now your amen says you don't know. I said after today, you will understand the God that has anointed you. Amen. 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 After today, you will know. 